It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's Roy Millsy, back with Hometown Commander. We're back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 decklist of the Commander in front of us on my quest to outbrew your favorite magic channel. As always, the decklist is going to be down in the description. If anyone was interested, please use it, test it, do whatever you want with it. Uh, use it for your other decks. I would love to see what you guys can do and what you think of it down in the comments below. But today we are looking at Michael Tyrant Descendocrats, our um, newest Golgari legendary from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. And I think the best way to cap off our dinosaur week with a non-dinosaur commander. The Michael Tyrant is a three mana star star elder fungus where its power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control that are fungi or sapperlings. And yes, we are going to use sapperlings in this deck. And it says, beginning of your end step, we create X11 black fungus creature tokens with this creature camp block where X is the number of time we descend it. So we, each time a permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, um, through some rulings that I've found out before we start this episode, tokens do not count for descending, so uh, we do need to be a little bit careful, but I think we still have the near-perfect setup to both care about descend and care about aristocrats in this deck. Aristocrats is a term we use in Magic to, to describe a deck that sacrifices tokens and small creatures for benefit and believe me this deck is going to do a very good job at it once we get it going not only because Myco tyrant makes us fungus tokens but because so many of our fungus creatures care about saplings and we'll get into that in one second i want to talk about how are we going to descend how are we going to get permanence into our graveyard and i'm going to go through some of the best cards in the deck i think that are going to help us do that consistently skull prophet is a creature for two mana that can tap for a mana or we can tap to put the top two cards of our library into our graveyard if either of those are permanents and we have the Micah Tyrant out, that's going to start stacking up our Descend counter uh, for that turn. Life from the Loam is a pretty popular spell that returns up to three target lands from our graveyard to our hand, but it says if you would draw a card, instead you may put exactly three cards from the top of your library into your graveyard and return Life from the Loam back to your hand. What Life from the Loam will do effectively is... We'll play it, getting the lands back, putting it in the graveyard, and the next time we draw, we do descend and get life from the loan back, always kind of putting our things into our graveyard as we go along. Uh, both Deadly Dispute and Village Rites have a chance to do this for us. Deadly Dispute says we sack an artifact or a creature, draw two, and make a treasure, and Village Rites says sack a creature and just to draw two. If we sacrifice a non-token creature, this will trigger descend for us, or if we sacrifice a non-token artifact for Deadly Dispute, this uh, will do that for us and allow us to get that other Descend trigger while also drawing cards. Plum the Forbidden is a very similar card, allowing us to sacrifice one or more creatures. When we do, we copy it for each creature sacrifice this way to draw a card and lose a life. Again, for every non-token creature we sacrifice, we're adding to that Descend counter for the rest of the turn. Uh, getting into the lands, remember that lands are permanent, lands count, so we want to try to run as many lands as we can that we can sacrifice. We're playing Dakmore Salvage, another one of these dredge cards, where if we could draw a card instead, if this is in our graveyard, we can um, put it into our hand and mill the, mill the two um, instead, which will allow us to hopefully get some benefit there. Evolving Wilds, a land that taps to go get a land of our choice into the battlefield tapped. We're playing the Terramorphic Expanse and Fabled Passage, both going to get basic lands. Fabled Passage lets that land come in untapped if we control four or more lands, and Terramorphic is always going to bring it in uh, tapped. Riveteer's Outlook, getting us a swamp or forest onto the battlefield tapped and gaining us a life. Promising Vein, one of the new caves. Search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tapped and shuffle. We're going to try out both of those new Discover Caves, because obviously when we tap it and sacrifice them to Discover, we are then descending uh, for the purposes of that. So as you can see, we're playing lots of lands that we're going to try to be able to sacrifice, as well as we do have Myriad Landscape as well. So it's not just our creatures we're trying to descend with, but we can also really take advantage of descending with lands. Okay, well I'm not going to go through every creature in the deck that cares about this, but this deck really takes advantage of most of these, these fungi that Wizards has printed all care about these things called spore counters. Um, how the spore counters work is the creature gets a spore counter during each of our upkeeps, and then all of them can sacrifice, uh, you know, take spore counters off of them to do something. There's Thalid um, Shell Dweller. It says remove three spore counters from it to make a sapling token. You see... Utopia Mike can, can uh, three counters from it to get us a sapling, but we can sacrifice a, slap, a sapling to add a color. Thalid, we can remove spore counters from it to 
make a 1-1 sapling creature token. As soon as you can see here, we don't just need to descend to get these fungi token to make Mycotyrant bigger. The more saplings we have, actually the bigger it's going to get. And there's a couple really important, um, really important uh, of these of these creatures that have this spore counter thing. The first is spore flower, which says we can sacrifice, you know, take those three spore counters off of it to have no creatures deal combat damage this turn. This can effectively fog the board and protect us that way. Um, Thielen of the Havenwood is a fun card. It says every fungus gets pulse and pulse and free spore counter on it. This could turn all of these fungi that have spore counters in them into pretty big creatures. And we can pay two mana to exile a fungus card from our graveyard to put a spore counter each fungus. What I like about this ability is it allows us to use our fungus to trigger the descend, our, our non-token creatures, and then get a spore counter on everything else. And there's a bunch more, but uh, again, uh, Vile Spore Thal can do it to give a creature haste. Again, you could see that we put the spore counters on our things, use them to get the sapperlings, and then we go immediately into what I'm what the aristocrat side of our deck. So using these one one sapling tokens, these fungi tokens that the micro tyrant makes to sacrifice them for value. Well, the question becomes what value can we get from them? We talked about Toby Micron sacking one for mana. We're playing things like Frexian's Altar and Ashnod's Altar to sacrifice them for a mana of any color or two colorless mana, respectively. All of these you know, Deadly Disputes and, and Village Rites we talked about, we can use our tokens for that. We're playing something like Victimize, where we can sacrifice a creature and return two creatures from our battlefield back to the, you know, graveyard back to the battlefield tapped. We could sacrifice a sapling to bring some of the fungi that we used earlier to trigger our abilities. But what we really want to do is use... Um, the death of those creatures, not just to get us benefit, but to start hurting our opponents. And I think two of the best cards we have access to, and we can always add more if we wanted to. The first is Zulpor Cutthroat. And every enter another creature we control dies. Each opponent loses a life when we gain a life. And then Slimefoot, um, of course, one that is a type that you know fits us better, but is a great commander in its own right. It says whenever Sapling we control dies, it deals one damage to each opponent. You gain a life, and for four mana, we can make a, uh, a Sapling. So this is great because... We can then take the death of these creatures and hurt our opponents. We also have something like Bash Remembrance, which is going to do the same thing. Each opponent loses life, and we gain a life. Um, we can also use something like Attrition, an enchantment that says we can play back and sacrifice a creature to destroy a target non-black creature. We can turn our tokens into uh, destroying creatures. And then something like Meat Hook, which every time a creature we control, die, we control dies, each opponent loses a life. We're playing the things like doubling season and parallel lives to double the amount of tokens we're getting because it does matter, and I'm fully willing to pay the my real world money to have cards like this in our deck because it's just going to make our make our the idea of our game plan even harder for our opponents to deal with. We have things like Oversold Cemetery, which is going to allow us to bring creatures back to our hand if we have four more in our graveyard. And we are playing one Planeswalker in Vraska Golgari uh, Queen, because on the plus two, we can sack another permanent. If we do, we gain life and draw a card. And then if we can get her up to nine, it says whenever a creature we control deals damage to a player, that player loses the game. So if we, if we can go wide and keep Vraska out and get her up to a minus nine, that minus nine could end the game at any time. Uh, a new card that I really like for all of these abilities is Roaming Throne. This is a very expensive card in the moment because it goes in so many decks, but it says when it comes in, we pick a creature type. Roaming Throne is a, is a creature in addition to the other types. I think for this case, we would pick Fungus, of course, because so many of our creatures are fungi. This says if a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So um, this is just going to allow us to take advantage of Slimefoot's ability twice, Mycotyron's Descent ability twice, so many other of our Fungus' abilities, um, giving them more Spore Counters because all of those Spore Counter triggers are, are um, trigger abilities at the start of our turn. And basically what it should do, hopefully, is accelerate ourselves uh, forward in getting more and more value as we continue to go on. There's a lot more cards in the deck, but we're eventually going to reach up to trying to end the game, and there's a couple ways we can do it. We're, we could just go wide, to the point that we overrun our opponents with that Vraska minus nine or using something like Tender Shoot Dryad to give all of our saplings a buff, um, or just the Myco Tyrant is gonna get big enough that we could knock somebody out with commander damage. We're trying out Overwhelming Stampede to give all of our creatures plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, which is probably almost always gonna be Myco Tyrant in that sense. This should turn all of our saplings and fungi tokens into a Huge, massive things to deal with. We actually are also going to try out that Garrick's Uprising to give all of our creatures trample and allow us to 
um, hit our opponents hard for that. I think that's a lot of the main focus of the deck. The rest of the deck is um, ramp to try to fill out our, our mana. Uh, we're playing, trying to play as much removal as we can to help uh, deal with our opponent's things in the process. Skull Clamp allows us to draw some cards by taking out those saplings or fungi tokens to draw some more cards and dig for more. I think we're doing a pretty classic a black green aristocrats list we're just taking what i think you would see from a from a slime foot list most of the time and we're just bringing it into the myco tyrant and taking advantage of some of the synergies that it gets as opposed to using something like slime foot although slime foot is a great commander in its own right i was like why not bring it into the myco tyrant add that you know something like namada and something like akawala akawali from the new set and use all of them to their fullest potential. Do I think this is a eight or nine in the power scale as far as aristocrats deck? No, we could power this thing through with a lot more aristocrat abilities. But why, like I said before, every every deck needs a spot to start. Every deck needs a place for us to start determining where it should be. And I think this deck does a good job at giving us a basis to work from and determining where the gaps in our deck are as we continue to test it. But let's get into a hand or two testing. This is a one lander, so we're gonna have to mulligan this one. Let's see, one, two, three, four lands, and it's great because we do have a couple of them that can sacrifice. And I think we can work it out where we get them down after the Mica Tyrant comes down to get our abilities. Who a turn one soaring, isn't that great? But the only downside if we turn one soaring is we won't be able to get a Mica Tyrant on turn two, at least the way our board looks like at the moment. So I think we're going to put the Woodland Chasm down in tap turn one. This will allow us to get... Um, an untapped land for this turn we could play the swamp and play the soul ring but again we have nothing to do with it once we do so i think we'll put the nursery in tap since it has to come in tapped and now we'll play the soul ring so now we have our, our turn three um micro tyrant ready to go i think what we do here is well if i do if i do the swamp I still don't have a green set left over for this Mycopia. So what I think I do is uh, pay the three for the Micro Tyrant now. We're going to pay for the uh, ex Evolving Wilds to go get a Forest in Tapped. That is going to make our Descent Counter one because of the Micro Tyrant. And we've got nothing else left we can do this turn. Uh, this green came in tap because of the wilds, and I have nothing left to do with that floating mana. So we're just going to make one fungus, bringing um, Micro Tyrant up to a 2-2. Two -two. We'll untap for this turn, play a Swamp. I think we get the... Actually, we probably should uh, play the Terramorphic Expanse instead. Get the Micon down. And we can uh, Kadama's Reach, so we're going to basically... What I would do is I was actually playing. I have enough mana to do this Terrible Free Expanse and the uh, and the Kadama's Reach at the same time. So what I would do f for my opponent is say, this Swamp's going to come in tapped, a Forest is going to come in tapped from Kadama's Reach, and then a f Swamp is going to go to my hand off of Kadama's Reach and do them at the same time just to, just to save a little bit of time instead of doing them separately. Uh, Micro Tyrant just saw one this turn because of the Evolving Wilds. Getting us another Fungus, bringing Micro Tyrant up to our two Funguses, up to him 4-4. Four, four. And then next turn we can start uh, the Micron up. Turn 5, we get a, another Swamp. We can play the Attrition, have that ready to go. We have some removal ready to go with the Assassin's Trophy. And again, just start stacking up counters. Micro Tyrant can start attacking because it's pretty big at this point if we want to do that. And this turn we could actually crack the nursery if we want to to discover to try to get a permanent or a spell that way and again this would be the point where literally now all we need is we have plenty of mana we just need the permanence to start making the count the tokens and something to start sacrificing the tokens which we do here with utopia micron we micon we just don't have something to sack those fungi and again i think we do with the attrition but we do have a, we do have some sack outlets we have some ways to do things now we just got to build the permanence on board so let's do this again Three lander with the Utopia Sprawl. We have a couple things we can put down. So I like this hand, even though it doesn't ramp us up super early into uh, the, the uh, Micro Tower. I'm going to put the Forest down. I'm not going to use this Fable of Passage just in case we draw more lands and we can get it, uh, get the Micro Tower down before we use it. Uh, turn two here, get the Shell Duller down. Now we can start getting the Spore Counters going. 
And here we don't have a choice. Um, we ran out of our available options as far as that goes. So we got to crack the, um, we have to crack the Fibble Passage now because we don't have a choice. We still only have two mana this turn and I don't really see anything worth it. So we're going to kind of call it, let it go there. All right. Turn four, we can get the Micah Tyrant down. And this now has, what, three counters on it. So we could use this to get a Sapperling, but I think we probably just wait. The next turn, we see an Acropolis that comes in tap. Having four mana, we can Fungal Sprouting, but I don't see the really reason to because Micah Tyrant's only a 2-2. So I'd probably get the Germinator down. Next turn, we have five mana. I like the idea of getting this Bastion down. I also like the idea of something like Mycolith. We would have access to, what, one one token? So it would come in as a 6-6, six, six, getting us um, two Sapperlings each turn, which I actually don't think is a bad idea. I think that's probably what I would do here at this point. Oh, that's right, we only have four mana because the Necropolis came in tapped. So I'd say let's probably get the Bastion down. This turn, I would get the get the Michaelith down and get those uh, get those tokens on the Michaelith by uh, sacrificing the Sapling we can make now. And then again, from this point, we keep keep getting the Spore counters on our creatures, keep stacking up the Sapperlings. We have Plum the Forbidden for some card draw. We have this to make a bunch more Sapperlings. We have this to get something back. We have this to start destroying creatures. And I think we're at a good point now where we can amass enough value to kind of to deal with our opponents and get ourselves closer and closer to help draining people out with Bastion. But let me know what you think of the deck down in the comments, and I will catch you guys next time.